I'm the only person that can say I own a privately owned amphibious combat vehicle. The building process on the vehicle started early on in 2000. The truck was manufactured by a company called General Purpose Vehicles. They made roughly about 11 vehicles, and they were designed or intended for the military. I had some friends of mine who came to me and, and said, Let, let's essentially buy a armored vehicle. And I said, well, let's do it. I think it took them a close to three years in construction. Basic specs, I believe the vehicle is about 25, 26 feet long. It's under 102 inches. It's actually 101.8 inches wide, which makes it street legal. The motor is located in the center of the vehicle, and that has a lot of other huge advantages, such as reducing its infrared signature, uh, allowing for more cooling from the air conditioning system to cool it. It has the blinkers, it has the headlights, it has high beams, it has extra fog lights. Uh, these things up here right now are bullet deflectors, uh, so if you're taking a high impact round, it's going to shred the round as it hits. We have eight massive tires, and we have the ability to engage a diff lock, which means all eight wheels are spinning at the same time, so when we go into mud. This thing drives like a tank. Inside the vehicle you can see it's rather roomy, very spacious. There's seating for 10 in the rear and then we have additional seating of four or maybe possibly six in the front. If one's tired, whatever, you change lanes and go to another country and you drive on the other side of the road, you can actually literally just move everything over and now you're driving on the other side. You can see the armor thickness um, it's pretty well protected and uh, it's actually a very fun vehicle to drive. You know, it, it has another nickname is called the Unstoppable Force. It will push through almost anything. Um, its front end was designed to go through one foot thick concrete walls and blast right through them. Today we have present a uh, Chevy uh, 3500 cargo van, and we're, well, we're definitely smashing through it. Literally, can drive over telephone poles, and you just don't—you don't even spill your cup of coffee. This thing is amphibious. It floats. We have pumps here, we have pumps in the APU compartment, pumps in the center, and pumps in the engine compartment, and pumps in the front. We can literally just drive it right in. Uh, we don't have to do any prep. Uh, you need about 12 feet of water uh, under it. In Hurricane Katrina, the vehicles actually were sent down there to assist. When it comes to driving it on the road and people's reactions, they're always pretty much fascinated by this. We enjoy taking the vehicle to car shows and events, let the public inside it. I mean, it's not every day they get to go inside something that's futuristic. Man, I've seen a lot of trucks on the road, but I've never seen one like this uh, riding. It's pretty, uh, pretty awesome. If I had a chance to own a truck like this, um, I definitely would bring it to a lot of parties, I'll tell you that. 
Uh, I let my wife drive it to work. I wouldn't have to worry about uh, getting an accident, that's for sure. <laughs> I have been the one who has taken charge of getting the vehicles into movies, films, doing special events. Some of the movies the vehicle's been in um, have been Red Dawn. Uh, it was recently in a Fox movie, which I'm not yet allowed to disclose. I don't like to discuss what we paid for it because there was other things that we had to do to the vehicle um, to ensure safety. As far as my friends, family, they thought it was a crazy purchase. I would love to acquire more of the vehicles, but I'd like to also see the vehicles actually um, be rented more in the movie industry. We've all agreed we will never sell the vehicle.